Welcome to Better View. In this video, I am going to talk about classification of nephritis. Nephros means kidney and itis is a suffix that is used to indicate inflammation. Okay, so nephritis is inflammation of kidney. It is classified into two parts, separative and non-separative on the basis of the exudate. Separative is classified into embolic and pyelonephritis, while non-separative is classified into interstitial, tubular interstitial and glomerular. So, nephritis is non-separative, separative types, then embolic and pyelonephritis are subtypes of the separative nephritis, while interstitial, tubular interstitial and glomerular nephritis are further subtypes of non-separative nephritis. Then, we have embolic nephritis. Embolic nephritis is also called acute separative glomerulitis, pyemic nephritis, hematogenous nephritis and descending nephritis. Out of these synonyms, the two most important that you have to remember are pyemic nephritis and descending nephritis. These two, they are very, very important from an exam point of view. Then, what happens in the embolic nephritis? Basically, there is an emboli and because this is separative nephritis, Therefore, this emboli is not aseptic, it is a septic emboli which is containing some bacteria. Okay, and this bacteria will lodge in the glomerular capillaries and the interstitial capillaries and there it will form microabscesses. Okay, so this is called embolic nephritis and because of this uh, lodging of the bacterial emboli in the glomerular capillaries, there will be inflammation. And what are these bacteria? They can be anything, but the most common ones that you have to remember are actinobacillus equa in horses, erysipelothrix ruseopathy in pigs. This one is also very important because if you know, erysipelothrix ruseopathy also causes diamond skin disease. So what happens? It is a septicemic disease. So there are cutaneous lesions mainly. That is why it is called diamond skin disease. But due to septicemia, what will happen? It will first lodge into the heart and it will cause valvular endocarditis. And there it will form a colony. And this bacterial colony will break off and a part of it will flow in the blood okay and it will reach to the glomerular capillaries where it will lodge and cause cause inflammation and this uh, bacteria it is separative in nature that is why it will cause uh, formation of the separative exudate pus okay Truparella pyogens in cattle it is also uh, causative bacteria of embolic nephritis grossly you will see multifocal raised tan foci okay they are seen subcapsularly so you have to remove the renal capsule okay Microscopically, glomerular capillaries may contain many bacterial colonies intermixed with necrotic debris and intensive infiltrates of neutrophils. So here, I hope you can see, this is a glomeruli, right? These are glomeruli, but this is all bacteria. This is all bacterial colonies and inflammation of uh, the glomeruli and infiltration of neutrophils, okay? Then there is one uh, pictorial here. So, as I said, it is descending nephritis because there's another type that is ascending nephritis. Okay. So, what is the meaning of descending? It is descending from the bloodstream from above, right? And ascending it means from the lower urinary tract. Okay. So, what is going to happen? There's this uh, aorta, and through the arteries, this uh, bacteria will reach to the kidneys and cause inflammation. Okay. So, embolic nephritis. This is also a picture of embolic nephritis and you can see uh, these raised foci, okay? Then the second type is pylo, uh, pylonephritis and it is called ascending nephritis, okay? Why? Because it uh, the bacteria ascends from the lower urinary tract to the kidneys, okay? So bacterial infection of the pelvis with extension into the inner medulla is called pylonephritis. Okay, there's inflammation of both renal pelvis and the renal parenchyma, mainly the inner medulla region. Okay, so bacterial uh, infection starts in the lower urinary tract. So it may be in the urethra, it may be in the bladder, it may be in the ureter, and then it will ascend through the ureters to the kidney where it will establish an infection in the renal pelvis. Okay, and then it will extend into the inner medulla region. So pathogenesis depends uh, upon the abnormal reflex of the bacterial contaminated urine from the uh, lower urinary tract to the renal pelvis. And this is due to vesico urethral uh, urethral reflex. Okay, so see the bacteria here, there is a bacteria, and it is going to cause an infection here in the bladder, and then due to deranged vesico urethral uh, junction and due to vesico urethral reflex, it will go like this into the renal pelvis and will cause inflammation. 
okay and what are the bacteria that usually cause this thing one of the common ones are e coli very common staphylococcus species streptococcus species pseudomonas aeruginosa and cornibacterium renal in cattle and pig cornibacterium renal is a very important causative agent of pyelonephritis okay one of the predilections of pyelonephritis are very frequent catheterization urolits and urine stagnation okay so whenever there is some obstruction then it may lead to vesicourethral reflex okay for example urolit then urethral mucosa is inflamed thickened reddened granular and coated with thin exudate pelvis and ureters can be dilated and have purulent exudate okay because it is a subtype of the separative nephritis the exudate is going to be separative it is uh, going to be neutrophilic okay you are going to see neutrophilia and of course because it is starting in the lower urinary tract you are not going to just see inflammation in the kidneys you are also going to observe signs of inflammation in the lower urinary tract like the ureter the urinary bladder and urethra microscopic uh, lesions include uh, necrotic and sloughed off transitional epithelium of the bladder and ureters you will see cellular debris neutrophils and bacterial colonies adhere to the denuded surface and neutrophilia in the renal interstitium accompanied by hemorrhages and edema now in the non separative part we have three subtypes first of which is interstitial nephritis so inflammation in the veins arteries lymphatic vessels and connective tissue is called interstitial nephritis okay then it can be infectious it can be non infectious it can be acute subacute or chronic chronic interstitial nephritis may uh, extend into the tubular part and the glomerulus then the acute in, uh, in lesions include edema hemorrhages and neutrophilia but as it becomes more chronic we will see the infiltration of macrophages lymphocytes and plasma cells okay and this is a common trope in inflammation the neutrophils they come first so when there's acute inflammation neutrophilia is there but as the infection becomes more and more chronic you will see uh, the infiltration of macrophages then you will see lymphocytes and plasma cells okay interstitial fibrosis can occur when it is uh, chronic then you, then you will see interstitial fibrosis you can also see uh, cast so basically this is the lumen and certain substances the exudate it may uh, lodge into this lumen and it will basically mold in the shape of the lumen and this is called cast okay one common example of interstitial nephritis is e coli septicemia so e coli septicemia is very common in calves and this may lead to uh, a particular condition called white spotted kidney which you can see here this is white spotted kidney why it is called white spotted kidney because of the presence of these white or gray foca uh, foci okay and it is multifocal interstitial nephritis then this is uh, again a picture that is uh, that was taken in our college so here you can see it is not uh, very clear when zooming out but basically what you have to observe here and of course the staining is a little bit washed off here because it is a very old slide so basically what you have to observe here there are two things one there is this lumen which is cast in it okay there is hyaline cast like this this thing is uh, wait a bit. yeah this one is what i am talking about then here in the interstitium we are going to notice inflammation and infiltration of neutrophils then another type of nephritis is granulomatous nephritis sometimes it is classified as a separate type sometimes you can also call it uh, as more severe form of the interstitial nephritis and it is characterized by presence of multiple granulomas and granuloma is a very specific microscopic lesion in which at the center you will have going to have necrosis and cellular debris which is uh, wait a minute yeah there is going to be uh, cellular debris and necrosis at the center then it is surrounded by a layer of epithelial cells and macrophages and then you are going to see layer of giant cells and then you are going to see layer of lymphocytes and at last you are going to see a fibrous capsule formed by the fibroblast so this is a typical microscopic picture of the granuloma and of course this is a chronic condition it is not acute and sometimes the foci may have calcified centers uh, for example in case of tuberculosis right so granulomatous nephritis it can be caused by aspergillus species histoplasma capsulatum even blastomyces dermatitis mycobacterium bovis again which is going to cause bovine tuberculosis and it may also be caused by certain toxicoses like vichia villosa okay here you can see the foci these are very small foci but they may get big okay and this is a typical granuloma and this is actually caused by ascaris 
scarid okay there this is actually the scarid at the center and then you will have all that infiltrated area and necrotic debris surrounded by capsule so this is the granulomatous nephritis again another picture in uh, this time in case of cat and this one is caused by feline infectious peritonitis right these are all these raised areas of granulomatous formation then tubulo interstitial nephritis so tubulo interstitial it means there's inflammation in the renal tubules and in the interstitium usually it starts in the renal tubules okay so what may be the cause sometimes the bacteria or some other uh, pathogenic substance it may cause inflammation directly in the renal tubules or it may be caused by chronic interstitial nephritis so in, uh, the inflammation has extended into the renal tubules it may be caused by chronic pyelonephritis or glomerulonephritis okay then it can be diffuse it can be multifocal in diffuse form you are going to see a gray mottling of the capsular surface while in multifocal form you are going to see more discrete areas of the gray infiltration in the cortex and outer medulla okay microscopically you are going to see aggregates of inflammatory cells throughout the dermatous interstitium and degeneration of neck or necrosis of tubular epithelium is the main characteristic feature okay then at last we have glomerulonephritis it is the inflammation of the glomerulus okay so the nephron has two parts one is barman capsule and the other is the tubules so the barman capsule has a tuft of capillaries called the glomerulus okay and the inflammation of this glomerulus is called glomerulonephritis it can be chemical mediated uh, so mediated by certain toxins or it can be immune mediated and this one uh, the immune mediated form is more common especially in dogs okay so what is going to happen there's some deposition of soluble immune complexes within the glomeruli okay so either antibody and antigen complex is going to form and then this is going to lodge into the glomerular capillaries or you are going to have uh, certain immune complexes for example in case of amyloidosis light chain okay there's light chain of the immunoglobulin and they are going to accumulate and they are going to form a blob kind of structure and this uh, complex is going to lodge in the glomerular capillaries and going to cause inflammation there okay so immune mediated mechanism is the more common of the two types of mechanism in glomerulonephritis okay it usually occurs in association with persistent infections or certain other diseases like autoimmune diseases or some persistent disease as i said like feline leukemia virus or certain chronic parasitism neoplasia like that the lesions are swollen smooth capsular surface glomeruli are visible as pinpoint red dots on the cortex and in chronic cases the cortex gets shrunken and capsular surface gets granular uh, then glomeruli vis are visible as pinpoint gray dots with time scarring of cortex develop okay so when it is acute the glomeruli are visible as pinpoint red dots do note that in horses sometimes you are able to observe these glomeruli in a healthy kidney as pinpoint red dots so in that case they are normal if you are not seeing any other symptoms and any other lesions but in other animals glomeruli are not uh, visible from the naked eye readily so if they are visible as pinpoint red dots then it may be a due to glomerular nephritis but when it becomes chronic the red dots are going to turn gray okay there are three types of granulonephritis in certain books a four type is also given there that is proliferative and in lot of text you will see that they have mixed this membrano proliferative and proliferative type together okay so that is what we are going to see here first membranous second membrano proliferative and third glomerulosclerosis so what is the main difference between these types in membranous type you are going to see sub epithelial immunoglobulin deposits without any hyperplasia of the endothelial or epithelial cells okay this is diagram of membranous glomerulonephritis and what you are able to see here first the epithelial cells uh, the visceral epithelium of the bowman's capsule it has foot processes podocytes are there but now they are flattened okay then there's sub epithelial deposit okay these are sub epithelial deposit of the immune complexes so this is membranous glomerulonephritis in membrano proliferative nephritis the accumulation or the deposition of the immune complexes is going to be either intramembranous or it's going to be uh, sub endothelial okay but not sub epithelial second thing you are going to see hypercellularity or hyperplasia of the glomerular endothelium or the visceral epithelial cells of the bowman's capsule and mesenglial cells then glomerulosclerosis is a chronic condition in this the glomeruli they shrink and they get hyalinized due to increase in the fibrous connective tissue okay 
So this is the microscopic picture. So in this case, you can see here, this is the proliferative part. Okay, this is all inflammation. Then in the membranous part, you are going to see thickening of the basement membrane. And then glomerulosclerosis. Basically, you are going to see hyaline change. So this is it for nephritis. I hope you like this video. If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.